Hello and welcome, my name is Ajax Post and you join me once again here for what I hope will be a relatively quick update on Transport Inc. It's been released for just over a week now and in that time we've had six little updates from the developers that are obviously taking on board all the feedback they're getting from the new player community, uh, fixing a few bugs and stuff that we've seen in the game, improving performance and resolving a number of the issues that myself and other players have had with the version that was released. So let's have a look at what's happened in the meantime since the last uh, video we're now at version number 1.0.6 mostly bug fixes and improvements but there have been a few uh, enhancements and we'll go through those in a minute um, but first a heads up um, if you're a mac player then you may well have problems with this release or indeed a, a release earlier i think the problem started at 1.05 but i may be mistaken at the moment the game does not start or doesn't work at all well on Mac. some Mac OS's. I'm not quite sure which ones. I'm not a Mac expert. The developers are aware of that. Uh, it appears to be an issue with video codecs and they are moving as qu quickly as they can to create a build which uh, Mac players can get into and so they can enjoy the game. So let's have a look at some of the improvements we've had in the game since the release. First off, we've had a number of improvements to the options. Uh, we now have the option to choose whether you have the in-game cursor or a hardware cursor. I'm not quite sure whether you want what the point of having the hardware cursor is. Again, maybe a, vi a visual or graphics thing that may be an issue for you. Um, they've also improved the edge scrolling, either using the mouse or the cursor keys. And for very slack-handed mouse <laughs> controllers like me, they have thankfully put in a scrolling speed. Because uh, I was finding that as soon as I moved the mouse to the top or bottom, particularly of the screen, uh, the map would just zoom off in some unheard of direction. And I'd then have to scroll all the way back. And it was annoying, basically. So they put that in. We also now have an interval selection so you can decide how often you want the game to save. Um, I've not got there yet, but the reports are from a number of players that the late game, when you've got hundreds, thousands of vehicles on the road, yours and the competitions, then lag can be a bit of an issue. Um, and that's obviously going to be exacerbated by having the game have to save and pause uh, while, you, while it's doing stuff. Uh, so if that becomes an issue for you, you can adjust that uh, interval either by clicking up and down or just typing in a number of minutes that you prefer. So I've just turned the game cursor off. So let's just see what difference, if any, that makes. Yeah, so there's, there's no obvious uh, cursor in there. The one disadvantage with the hardware cursor is that you can't tell that you've got multiple functions you can do when you just hover over something. Uh, so if I double click on that, it does everything it needs to, but there's just no sort of visual cue to the fact that uh, you can do something interesting with that particular object under the mouse. So I'm going to turn it back on if you don't mind. Now the other thing they have brought back in the very latest update in 1.06 is the global race. We saw it in the early stages of the closed beta. Uh, it was taken out just before release while they were tweaking and enhancing and improving it. This is a fascinating alternative to free play in that you have access to the entire world map. Uh, let's play in Mexico, shall we? Look at that! The whole map represented. Though, to be honest, some countries are a little sparse, like Russia, Australia. Their selection of... and there's this country here, whatever that is. Uh, the Republic of Congo appears to have no cities at all. Uh, or maybe there's one. Well, there must be one. Oh, there are two, apparently. <laughs> yes. Some of the countries are very sparse, um, and the choice of towns is limited and, as some players have said, a little bit odd. But nonetheless, you have that, and the queue, and the, the point of Global Race is simply to connect every city you can before your competitors get there. Uh, basically just beat the competition into the ground. But we're not going to be doing that. I'm going to be carrying on for the purposes of this uh, exercise with um, just a review of the features we've seen updated by going back to the story mode that I've been following so far in the previous videos of this series. 
Okay, now if you may remember, in the first video I did after release, I was shocked, surprised, and a little bit annoyed by the fact that they had changed the way pricing works, the way ticket prices work. It used to be, in the pre-release versions, the route, you would set the prices on the route for economy, for first class, and for cargo on that route, regardless of the vehicle. Now what they've done, and as I think we've discussed some players actually prefer it to have different prices for different vehicles, for different sort of comfort levels and so on like that, which was fine, but the way it was implemented in that first release version was rubbish and extremely tedious. You had to click on every vehicle to get to the price. You don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to do that at all. What you can do, if we go to uh, this route here, I can see I have got... Um, a number of ticket prices here for the various vehicles, cargo and economy class, in fact. And what they've done, they've done a couple of things. The first update they did was that if you change the price on a vehicle, every vehicle of that type on that route will change price. So if I increase the price here on this bus to 52, 50, like, there it goes, then this other bus the third vehicle here also changes to 52 per, per economy passenger. So that's nice and handy. So whichever vehicle, I mean, you can do it on the vehicle as well if you prefer. So if I do it here, then that changes the price for every vehicle on the, every vehicle of that type on that route, which is very handy. But even better, as you saw, it is available directly on the vehicle information screen. So you can do that here makes life a lot easier, to be honest. So I'm happy about that. They are planning to do further updates to this, I think. Uh, so, oh, and I've just completed the chapter. That was unexpected and unwarranted because <laughs> I've got something else I need to show you. I'll get back into it in a second. But yes, they are planning to make further changes to the data presentation and how you manage the sort of things like prices and the overall logistics of your fleet. Anyway, let's get back into that chapter. I've got other stuff, exciting stuff to show you. Okay, so we're back in the game, I, and I did realise when I went back into that previous save that it didn't show you exactly what I wanted to show you um, about multi-city routes, which is what this one does. So what I discovered, it's a little bit of an exploit, um, so this may well change <laughs> as they fix things. First off, a quick reminder about multi-city routes is how they're created. If I want to create a route, say, or let's go down here, out the way. If I wanted to create a multi-city route, I would go from Marseille, shift click to the next town, Toulouse, uh, shift click into Bordeaux, and then I would, because this is how I do it in other transport games, shift, then I would click into Toulouse, and that would create my multi-city route. So if we look at that, so we now have a route between Marseille, Toulouse, Bordeaux, back to Toulouse, and then back to Marseille. But as I think we discovered in our previous video, that's not how it actually works. If you put a vehicle on this route, what it will do is we'll go from Marseille to Toulouse, on to Bordeaux, back to Toulouse, and then, rather bizarrely, it goes back to Bordeaux before going back to Marseille. No, it doesn't make sense to me either, and they may well fix that uh, in an upcoming update, but uh, be aware of that. It may not work uh, like you're expected to from other transport games. The way to make this do as you expect it to is to add to the route, or you would do this when you create it using the left click, of course, normally, is add the starting city to the end as well. So by doing that, your vehicles will go Marseille, Toulouse, Bordeaux, back to Toulouse, back to Marseille. That works perfectly, there's no issue with that. So yeah, I would expect in say Transport FIFA 2, this to tell me, uh, you can't go from Marseille to Marseille. That doesn't make sense, going from your end point to your start point. That's nonsense, but that's how Transport Inc works. However, we don't need that route, uh, so we can uh, get rid of you there, get rid of you there, delete that route, there you go. Um, there is a slight exploit which we can use here, which uh, I think this route here between Luxembourg, Liège and Brussels will show off. Now in Luxembourg here, uh, if I hide all the vehicles, 
uh, you can see we have first class passenger demand uh, with Liège and economy class demand with Brussels. Uh, unhelpful, really. In Liège, however, although we, we still have our first class demand, obviously, with Luxembourg, we do have both economy and first class demand with Brussels. Uh, Brussels, likewise. Yeah, Liège accepts both in both directions, uh, but Luxembourg and Brussels will only exchange for it will only exchange economy class passengers. However, it's a little bit of an exploit. I have mentioned this to the developers, so they may well change it in an upcoming version. Uh, but if we look at our vehicles here, if I pin you to the window so you don't disappear, you shouldn't anyway. The game's quite good at keeping windows you're working on in view. We put you both there. So we've got the economy and the first class vehicles uh, here. Uh, yeah, you see that? That's the mouse scroll, edge scrolling. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit too sloppy, I'm afraid, to, to work it properly. We, we'll organise them like that. Okay, so if we look at our passengers. All right, so here, these, this, these, both these buses are coming from Luxembourg. Uh, as you'd expect, um, 12 first class passengers to Liège and 28 economy class passengers to Brussels. Let's move this forward. What happens? The economy class passengers actually pay a fee in Liège. No one gets off. That number here didn't change, but you saw a green number, a profit come up, or revenue rather, it's not profit yet, uh, revenue came up from that economy class bus in Liège, en route to Brussels. The first class bus, and bus, yeah, you get the profit and the passengers change over. You lose some, you gain some in Liège. Now, they're both going into Brussels, so our economy class. Yeah, we get our fee for Brussels. And the economy class, uh, I don't think did, did it? It probably did. I wasn't watching it closely enough. We'll watch the first class on the way into Liège. So again, the Brussels, yeah, a fee, but no passenger changeover. The first class works perfectly. An odd little exploit. Um, you would probably design the routes better, so you only had buses carrying economy class passengers where they wanted to go, and likewise first class. But it's a little trick to make perhaps a little extra money. Unless there is a good reason for it, but then I don't know that. Anyway, right, what else do we want to talk about here? I think that's the only reason for staying on this map. Um, oh, that's me randomly clicking things. Yeah, there's, a diff there's no obvious easy way to get out of some of these things. It would be nice if there was a delete or escape key which would sort of clear any windows that you're not working in. And just go back to a basic map display but there isn't at the moment so so let's move on to another map to look at some other features which we've not explored before in transport inc right so this is uh, i think it's chapter six which you've not seen me play before i've only just sort of got into this chapter we're doing rail and everything it's really quite exciting <laughs> but a couple of things i want to highlight here first um, is in chapter in this chapter we're introduced to the road blockage We've seen roadworks before where the road is highlighted in yellow and that just causes your vehicles to slow down a lot. A road blockage here actually means vehicles can't travel over that piece of road at all. And what will happen when that when that occurs is you'll get this message coming up here, this road closure, and the vehicles that are impacted by that start flashing. One little gripe I have is that if you move into hiding the vehicles in the detailed vehicle uh, icons, particularly obviously helpful if you've got a very busy map, uh, there is no indication that they are stuck here. These little blobs, the cargo trucks, the buses, whatever, there's no indication here that they are stuck. Um, you see that here if you click on it, and likewise on this one. You see that there. So you see it's impacted, but you have to click on it to realize that. And while we're looking at here at this, look at what we've got here. We have got in the big bold sort of lime green, the actual route the bus is trying, trying to traverse. So it's going from Le Mans to Troy. If a vehicle is stuck because of a road blockage, you have two options available to you. 
down here we have the wait for the obstacle to be removed, which is what it's doing anyway. That's the default action. It just stops. As soon as the road blockage occurs anywhere on its route, it stops. It doesn't carry on driving up to the blockage. It just stops where it is. Um, so it may, in fact, not leave town at all, like this bus here in Troy. Shall I turn them back on again? Let's do that. Um, yeah, so that's the route is, it would normally travel. But you see here, in the slimmer, bright green, a diversion. So if you're thinking, actually, I'd love to have those 12 first-class passengers actually get to their destination before nine days are up. Yeah, the road closure ends in nine days. So assuming it can make this journey via this detour within those nine days, you can do that. So this bus here, is that the one we're looking at? It is. So we'll click here, use the detour. And you can see the, act, the icon come up here that that bus is using the detour. Uh, anything else here we need to worry about? We could send you off on the detour as well, actually. I think, yeah, you're only going up to Paris, so that's quite a short route, but let's get you going anyway. There you go. Uh, and this cargo truck here, uh, I'll let him wait. Now, this one here is the alternative, uh, the other direction, uh, Paris to Troy. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have you divert as well. There you go. So that's the diversions. That's quite nice. What I would like to see, what I've mentioned to, to the developers on their, their Discord server, is what would be nice is if there was an option for the vehicle to actually drive up to, to the blockage itself and stop there, not at whatever point it was they first noticed there was a blocked road. So, yeah. So the... So it was short in that time they got to their destination. As soon as the blockage was clear, they could then carry on and only travel that short distance. Particularly if it's only a, a day or two or a short time before the blockage is cleared anyway. Uh, yep, yeah, so we'll carry on with that. They'll carry on on their diversion route. Uh, I think, oh, you're not get, you're going to need diverting again, are you? How long have we got? Oh, it's gone. That's fine. You're not impacted anymore. Right, now, this particular chapter is fun because it introduces trains and a couple of points about trains they're expensive to get a train license to buy trains you need to buy the license to do that in this shop and you don't see the list of trains available to you until you buy the license and that license costs you two hundred thousand dollars or whatever currency this pretends to be so it's a very expensive license so you'll need in this chapter at least a good um, a good profitable set of road routes before you can get anywhere close to putting trains on the on the map uh, the license costs you 200,000 the trains themselves cargo trains 200,000 passenger trains 300,000 so yeah get quite a good bank balance going before you start thinking about putting trains on the route the depots, you will need a separate depot for your train vehicle, for your trains. As you see, I have here in Paris. The train depot costs 50 grand as opposed to 24, 25, I think, isn't it, for the road depot. Um, and if you're looking for a manager for your trains, you'll need to employ someone at 100,000 again. So it's quite an expensive operation, but they do produce a lot of revenue. Where's, have I got a train going anywhere? Oh, we have got this train here. Let's follow you. Let's pin you. There you go. Oddly enough, when you buy them and put them on a route, they make a kind of a very cheesy... Let's wait for that price to come up. That uh, revenue. 80, pass, 80 cargo at only 5,000. Oh, that's because that's a short route. Yes. I do later in the game. If I, what are you doing? Well, there's another roadblock. That doesn't affect me. Ah, this train here. This cargo. Is you, you're a passenger train. You're going all the way down from Paris to Clermont-Ferrand. You should be very profitable indeed. Let's hurry you along a little bit. There you go. Into the station. $128,000. That's not bad at all for one bit of a journey. So they are very profitable once you've got them on the tracks, as it were. Now, obviously, creating a train track, a train route, 
is as simple as clicking on the town, clicking on the rail route here, and then just left clicking on where you want it to go. Um, I'm not sure it wants to go anywhere, actually. Oh, it can go there. That's fine. You can go into, what's that, Borge, is it? Yeah. Create a route there and create your, and just drag a train onto it, just like you do with a road vehicle. One issue to be aware of here is, as I did when I was running on this, when I started this map, I had cargo running, I think, between Paris, yep, yeah, Paris and Bourges, and that was done by trucks. I had a couple of trucks on there. In fact, I still got them, haven't I? Be aware, the train will compete for that. So if you don't have enough cargo here to support a train journey and the trucks you've got on there, then get rid of rid of one or other, and obviously I would get rid of the trucks, being the, uh, the slightly less profitable. Right, um, and I think that's about it for the updates I want to cover in this particular video. So what I'll quickly do is just um, fast forward a little bit and just show off because, well, because you know I've got to, I've got to do that. You know, there's no point in me being here unless I can show something off, and if not my own talents, then then what? I mean, I never claim to be. An expert at any of the games I play but um, sometimes success well you just have to show off that you can can do something so this is the map I've created I've for the transport network I've created in this chapter which I think is chapter six of the story mode introducing trains and the objectives are four trains and accumulating one million of these transporting dollars in uh, in revenue or at least in your bank balance to keep it in there oh, one other thing on uh, trains is they also have separate drivers like obviously really you do it's a different skill set isn't it driving a train to driving a bus uh, and they are a lot more costly so you may need to factor that so before you start putting trains in then do be aware that they will be costly and so you need to make sure you've got the uh, the buffer, the cash balance to a cater for that. And the managers. Oh, one final thing on managers, actually, which I should have mentioned earlier. Uh, they, they changed this around a bit since, um, since the first release. It's only been updated in the, I think it was updated in 105. So just the previous release to the one I'm playing now is when you add a manager, it will automatically automatically default to having the full repair turned on. Um, now that does, as far as I understand it, add an extra cost to your management of vehicles, um, which can be a bit of a stretch sometime if you don't have particularly profitable routes early on in the game. Um, so by all means, you can turn it off. So until... So, as we've noticed before, the trains and buses do take a little while now to deteriorate. It's nowhere near as quick as it was in the early access in the beta builds. Um, so you can turn this off for a bit until you have established your routes and they are making enough money and you can afford it. Uh, and you just need to turn that back on again. As you see, that costs 750 a month to do the full repair. So I'll do that on all the trains as well. Right, so that's it. I'm just about to complete this chapter and heading into the next one. And that, I think, is more than likely where we'll start in the next video update for Transport Inc. So thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed this quick update to the series. If you have, it'd be great to hear from you. A bit of a like would be lovely. Even better, though, if you've got any thoughts, comments, anything to say at all, suggestions, recommendations, criticisms even, whatever or questions about the game and what, what we're doing in it and how it's going to develop, then I'll be happy to uh, to engage with you on that. So please do just drop a note into the comments box below. Beyond that, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or indeed any of my other Let's Play series. Heads up for the next chapter, we're in the UK. At last, home territory. And names of places I can actually pronounce without sounding embarrassing. <laughs> so let's look forward to that. So from me, Ajax Post, here in Transport Inc. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.